question. What are you talking about? It's super cool because of the WWE. Boom Watch Fan! What is up, Watch Geeks? Welcome to episode 52 of Ask TNH. I just doubled that with you guys and with Snapchat. Snap that. Um, follow us on Snapchat if you don't already. Uh, nothing's going on. You guys have been recording this last week, so I have nothing to say to you about current events. Um, nothing. Sorry. Let's get into the questions. Should I buy the Bell & Ross BR123? While you were asking that question, I got this photo. Look at that. Oh my god. Isn't that just totally bananas? Anyway. That's a ridiculous question. How, how the f could I possibly know what will fit in your collection? What you should buy? I don't know what you value. I don't know what you already have. Uh, so, you know, not, I'm not trying to bully you or, you know, cause a whole, you know, argument. But there's no way I could possibly tell you, uh, you know, with, you know, with a you know, substantive answer, uh, whether or not you should buy a watch. I have no clue. Uh, but I can tell you about the watch, my thoughts on it, and then you can make the decision as to whether or not you think you should buy it. Uh, so I guess let's, let's do that. Uh, Bell and, let's start off with the Bell & Ross brand first. Um, it's, I mean, they're full of shit, right? I mean, you know, a lot of their whole marketing thing is full of shit. They're talking about cockpits, and they're talking about they're doing the same thing, trying to forge history, trying to forge uh, a very cool factor, which they do have in a lot of ways. A lot of their designs are very cool, uh, but let's not pretend it's anything more than it is. Which you know, it is. It is cool, but let's not pretend it's anything but cool. You know, uh, you just it's just it's an interesting design watch. Uh, some some of the models are way better than others. They had head and shoulders better than others. And we'll get into the brand like a holistically on a different episode. But this the, the BR one two three is an interesting watch. Okay, uh, case first case PVD PVD is much better now than it was. You're not going to run into the problems with PVD scratching off. You know, showing you know the steel beneath that you would have years ago. Right, and if you do run into those problems, you can just get it recoded. I believe, like I'm 99% sure you can just get it recoded. Uh, actually, no, you definitely can. I've seen people do it before. So don't worry about like that old school kind of uh, problem that used to exist. Uh, as far as case size, 41 millimeters. Uh, I do think it's a little big. I think it's about a millimeter or two millimeters too big, but I'm, I don't take problem with it uh, because I don't take issue with it. Not problem. I don't take issue with it because it is. Uh, it is still not offensive and most wrists probably will look probably pretty good with a 41 millimeter watch plus black you know the black, a lot of the case most of the cases are black the black pvd and black does look smaller like pretty pretty much so all the time so uh that that probably will help you out too with with size and fit um when you should wear a watch with this aesthetic uh uh, and once again, unless you're this really oxymoronic guy that wears suits um, and dresses them totally down with rugged watches uh, and beat up loafers, I would stay away from it. You know, with a suit, I would wear this much more casually with a sweater, a pair of khakis, you know, jeans, cardigan, stuff like this. Um, I just I don't really like when watches are out of place. I think that doesn't do the outfit or the watch justice. But I'm not gonna get into style because who the f am I? You know. But um, I guess move on to dial configuration. I like the 12. 39 configuration with the sub seconds at the bottom. Um, I think it is aesthetically pleasing. I like their font. I like a lot of the color combos they do. Um, I think the ivory is pretty interesting. You don't see that all too often. I'll show a picture of that below. I think it's, you know, it's not for everybody, but I think it is an interesting color. Um, some of the heritage, kind of like the brownish, rusty uh, combos are pretty interesting. But, um, you know, past that, I think that the, the configuration as a whole, forgetting color, is conservative. I think it's a great alternative to like a Rolex Explorer or something like that. Uh, the movement. That's where we really get into value. I, it, it's an, it's, I think it's an ETA, what is it, 2892 or 2982? 2892. Uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. I'm a little dyslexic. Not a little, I am dyslexic. So I think... I think I know it's an Etta. It's it's a standard old Etta movement, which is nothing that's impressive about it. I mean, I'm wearing, you know, a value movement right here. Um, and it's great, and I love Valjoux and Etta movements. I'm a huge fan of them. I think that it's ridiculous and hypocritical that we can praise vintage Daytonas and then shit on Etta movements now. It's, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, but I also, on the same hand, don't think that you should shell out $3,400 for a watch that's well-designed with an Etta movement. 
I think $2,000 would be much more appropriate. So I do not recommend you buy one of these. If you do decide to buy one firsthand, I recommend you buy it on the aftermarket, saving $1,000 plus, probably more than that, probably closer to $1,500, uh, and moving on. So uh, for you, I mean, does your collection have room for an Explorer-ish watch? Um, you know, does, do you want a lot too grand to a watch that fits that kind of hole? I don't know. Uh, you can, you know, shoot me an email and we can talk more intimately about your collection, which any of you guys are, are you know, more than willing to do, I'll happily answer. But uh, that's the watch. I do think at a certain price point, there is a value there. But um, holistically, it is a very, very subjective watch. And what, uh, really what you value changes the perception and the review entirely. You know, if you're not an Eta guy, it's not going to work for you. Uh, if you're a hot horology guy, stay away. If you're not, then be self-aware and, and, and maybe proceed with the watch. That's it. Thank you guys for watching episode 52 of Ask TNH. While we're on the topic of uh, cases and like PVD and stuff like that, uh, we did an episode uh, on Tuesday of chrome-plated cases on vintage watches and whether or not you should, you know, buy them or even consider buying them. So check that out. I mean, I think that cases are a very interesting uh, topic. Apart from that, subscribe uh, to our channel uh, and uh, follow us on Snapchat. That's it. Down. All things are below. I'm getting the direction. Uh, thanks, guys, for watching.